says, do not be attracted to strange new ideas. I thought about that. How many times do churches get together and people get together or God's people get together and somebody says, I have a new idea, I have a new thought, I have a new this or I have a new that. He says, these, these new strange ideas, he says, your strength comes from God's grace. What gets you through the day? It's the grace of God. What gets you through tomorrow? It's going to be the grace of God. And God is always continually pouring his grace out on us. And, 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 I, and I've talked to some of y'all this morning, and some of you guys have gone through just horrific things that you had to deal with. But man, God's grace is what's going to get you through it. Amen. Um, so we talk about this series called Not Going Back, and it has nothing to do with going back to a place, but it has going back to who you were. God, you know that God's working in your life. He's changing you. He's constantly you know, molding you and shaping you. And when he gets done with you, you're not going to look like you. You look like Jesus. Amen. Because that's what he's trying to do. And so I've got a couple I want to introduce to you that we're going to bring up here. Um, and would you welcome with me to our church. This is our very first guest Woo! at Renewal. Harvey and Linda Goodman. These people are very, very, very special to us, and um, I am excited to, uh, to, to in, wherever you like, a rose between two thorns, yeah. right? <laughs> there it is. And uh, these people are extremely precious to us because, um, because we, we, uh, they, if it wasn't for them, uh, chances are there's a there's a good chance my my wife wouldn't be here today. This is the gentleman and his wife that led my in-laws to the Lord on the mission field in Australia. So you heard stories about Judy being born in Australia. You heard stories about her Dutch parents that were that migrated to Australia and there a neighbor invited Judy to church because evidently she was a hellion and he needed Jesus. <laughs> right? I don't know what's wrong with your daughter, but she needs Jesus. And so she started coming to church and then her, her dad, my father-in-law, John, said, you know what, I want to know what they're teaching him or teaching her. And so uh, he started going to church. I think you guys were having a revival was going on. A uh, tent meeting had started. An old-fashioned tent meeting is where we were um, where, where he attended first. It was not at, at our meeting place, but at a tent meeting. Wow. And he says, the story that he tells is, um, he, was a, he was an insurance salesman. And his closing line that he always used was, why not now? Yeah. Why not now? And I think, were you preaching? Were you, were you, were you doing the sermon? And you, in the invitation at the end of the service, you said to people, why not now? Isn't that crazy? Makes sense. That right? Yeah. And so he is absolutely, uh, you know, blown away by what happened at that meeting. And then he goes forward. He gives his heart to Christ. And then um, and then he invites you guys back to their house. Yeah. And then she did not want, she didn't want Jesus at that time. And then she said that you had such a look on your face. And she said, tell me again. Yes. And you were playing with Judy, right? You took Judy. Box, out in the hot sun in Australia. There you go, sitting out in the hot sun and trying to trying to get her, you know, uh, distracted. distracted. We we know Judy can be a busybody. Uh, and that's it. Was that my outside voice? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And so um, and so the Judy, so she's playing, and then and then and then you you gave the gospel again to Joanne, my mother-in-law, and then she accepted Christ as her savior. Yes, I saw when the light turned on. I could Isn't that see amazing? In her face, yeah, in her eyes. Um, and so I, we, they are such a big part of even what we do. So you go all the way back then, and what we do today is an extension of their ministry in Australia. So we want to give you the connection. We want you to see that these stories that we tell are, are true. And then we have we have people that can verify it, right? Um, so we've been doing this series um, basically on how God changes us and God takes us on a process. 
And you guys have been in the ministry for a very, very long time. How, if I can ask, how many years have you been, you been in the ministry? I preached my first sermon in 1967, so I think that's just a bit over 50 years since I preached the first one in the Lakeland, Florida. Oh my God! Now I called it preaching. They may not have, but that's what I call it. right. Um, so, so, so. He's a lot older than I. Am. Yeah. <laughs> well, we knew that, right? I mean, that was a given. And so, um, and so, 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 you got 50 years of ministry, and, and God has done some incredible things in you guys' life. You, you had children, grandchildren, uh, ministry on different continents, huh? One great. You have one great. Wow. How can you have a great grandchild when you're 29? Yeah. How does that even happen? We started um, young. <laughs> so uh, we're so we're doing this series on not looking back, and and I want to I just want to ask you guys we want to we want to draw from 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 your wisdom and draw from what you guys have done. What are some of the what are some lessons that God has changed you and walked you guys through that really um, has really made a, an impact? Maybe you know. Um, that was a moment that happened where God just shifted you or maybe changed your thought on something or maybe something happened to you where it was a hard road to go through, but you look back on it now and you see the blessings of the Lord. One of the things, there's an old Southern gospel uh, song that says that God on the mountain is still God in the valley. And, uh, <clears throat> and it seems to us that God has to allow each of us to learn that lesson that he's still there and he's still God yeah. and uh, and I have my experience has been that I've learned so much more in the valley than I ever learned on the mountain wow. I rejoice on the mountain but in the valley I get the lessons yeah. and um, and there have been some deep deep times um, in the mid 80s we went through an experience in our lives when it appeared that Satan had got a victory and we were finished, but coming back to the States and spending some months here, uh, we, we renewed and, uh, and then God gave us another, uh, I'm sorry, what was that word again you used? The, you what? <laughs> <laughs> we, we no, were, I just want to make sure y'all are listening to that. We that's, were, a, that's a great we, word. It's yes, a great word. Yes, and, um, I, um, uh, Linda had a, a breakdown in Australia. And uh, uh, it, uh, when I say she did, we did, because I went through it with her. And we came back to the States and spent those months, and I dedicated those months to just seeing her healed. Uh, the doctor that first saw her there said, don't ever bring her back. She, she should never come back to this country. But we both knew that God had different plans after just over a year of healing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he let us have a wonderful ministry and all. Uh, we have so many stories about that, but that's another for another time, maybe. Uh, but it was a it was a experience that I wouldn't wish on anybody. But like I said, there were lessons that God taught us um, that we can't do it. We can't do it. Mm -hmm. And um, if it's done, it'll be because He does it. Now He'll use us. He'll use you know He uses. Human instrumentality, that's his, that's his plan. Yeah. But um, that human instrumentality needs to be surrendered. Yeah. And let him <coughs> do, do the work in our lives and through us. Hmm. I know that some people here, I, I've talked to them today, they, they, they're struck, they have just issues in life and things and heartache and pain that they're going through. And uh, we, we talked a little bit about um, when you guys came back. Um, what, what were some of the things that really helped you guys, maybe as a couple or maybe individually, that really helped get you through that, 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 that dark time? In the 80s, you're talking yeah. about that experience. Um, I guess one of the, we were pretty much left on our own. Uh, we attended a good church. Uh, the pastor told us he didn't know any, anywhere to send us, any person to send us to yeah. anything. That was actually the seed for what we've been doing for the last 22 years. Um, uh, as we look back over the years, we realized that um, that what we were sharing with others was from our own experience, and uh, and it was uh, some um, uh, 15, 16, 17 years later 
that we started this ministry that we're in now, but the seed was sown back then because we could identify with those who were, I'll use a word that everybody will understand, burning out, the yeah. burnout oh, thing. Yeah. And uh, we, had a, we had a wonderful ministry in um, that area where Judy and her family came into our lives. Um, but a lot of my ministry was my working. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and a lot, uh, I shouldn't say a lot, but I'll just say some of those uh, conversions were, well, you know, the seed and the sower, one of my favorite parables, the seed and the sower, only 25% of that seed took to good ground yeah. and produced. And, and so I've, uh, over the years, I've been, uh, that's been my consolation, that uh, I can't expect to do a whole lot better than Jesus said we would do. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, so I, I think one of the great, great lessons was that <coughs> he don't do it, it's not <coughs> worthwhile, it's not going to last. It's a temporary thing, and uh, the hardest thing for me um, as a driven man, and that's who I was, uh, was to let him do it, mm -hmm. turn it over to him, let him do it. I, I've, uh, I was in the insurance business, and a successful insurance salesman before I went into the ministry, and so I carried some of that with me yeah. when I went into the ministry. and. Uh, and somewhere down the road, uh, through this time that we've talked about, um, we we learned to turn over to him, and then we went back and had not only a, a, a good ministry, but an enjoyable ministry. The first part was those years of Penrith and... brought to Jesus, and there are problems in 85% young Christians <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that you have to, you know, you have to learn how to teach them to deal with, yeah. and we were still learning, we were just kids back then, kids in our early 30s, 20s when we arrived, yeah. but by the time we met them. We were, we were we were talking earlier um, back in the back and, and you know one of the things that when you go through a, a situation in your life and you ask God you know why 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 is this happening to me and then sometimes years later you, you don't really understand the fullness of what God's doing in your life through those valleys and then you find out that God does plant in that time and then there is a harvest that comes later and and so your ministry today uh, tell us a little bit about. Anchor Ministry, right? Yeah, Anchor Ministry is a missionary pastor's retreat. Uh, 96, we moved to the Branson area. Somebody here probably has been there, or at least you're familiar Missouri, with Missouri, anybody been to Branson, Missouri? Branson. Yeah. All right. One of your favorite vacations back there, right? <laughs> God said, I love, I love Branson. So we went there, and God gave us uh, the use of uh, four facilities, uh, a couple of them were ours, actually wound up three, three of them were ours, but um, in the first uh, 10 years, uh, I went back just to kind of see what God had uh, allowed us to do, and we had had in our, about our um, I tell, uh, I mentioned just the other day, that I, re I, I communicate with one of the pastors on a regular basis, and, and it hasn't been that long since he was with us, but uh, he uh, his wording is, uh, Brother Goodman, you saved my life. And I, I don't think he means that literally, but I understand what he means, yeah. having been there myself. So now, because of, because of the pain and the hurt that they went through and they experienced, now God has called them to a ministry to be able to pour into pastors who are hurting and broken. And, I, and we all know that nothing ever happens to pastors. No way ever said anything, anything negative against the pastor, right? It's always positive. Everybody loves the preacher. Uh, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Is that money? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but, but, but not just pastors, but, but, but you as well. I mean, there's things that we go through, things that we struggle with. And, 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 and it's, it's like the verse you know, that I read in Hebrews where it says that, that the strength, your strength comes from God's grace, God pouring his grace out on you. And, 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 and what we experience as missionaries and as pastors is no different than what anybody else experiences. You, you would think that actually if I do what is right, if I do what God has called me to do, if I change my life and make all these moves for the Lord, that everything's going to actually work out better. And a lot of times it doesn't because Satan is fighting you so hard and God is moving you and changing you and strengthening you, but Satan is, your enemy is always going to come and he's always going to try to attack you. And so I guess the, the one thing I love about what we're doing this morning is I, to show you that everybody has issues and problems that they go through and that really they need the time to be able to heal. Um, what are some of the things that in your ministry now that you guys do that, that you see pastors that need healing? That you really try to say, okay, this pastor just needs to be able to maybe a friend or... Mostly it? just listening. Yeah. Just having a, just having a shoulder so they can talk. And um, just sit and listen to them. They don't really want any advice. They know. Most of the pastors and missionaries, they know what they need to do. But a lot of times they just need to voice it to yeah. someone else that will listen. An old seasoned um, pastor you would think would um, have all the answers, wouldn't you? But uh, let me just tell you a quick, real quick, sure. it's a long story, but I'll, I'll make it quick. Sure. Promise. I'll try. Okay. Um, the Lord gave us a cabin cruiser a few years ago. Do you remember I shared that with you? Yep. I whined and complained and moaned about that cabin cruiser because the Corps, Army Corps of Engineers controlled the state of Rock Lake and they wouldn't let us increase the size of our boat ship to put it in there. We had it in the commercial dock. We were paying $185 a month just to leave it in there. And that gift wound up uh, in a short time, a few, three years. Yeah, we never used it. Um, <coughs> being, uh, being a real nuisance around it. And I complained to my preacher and just... I'm sure you heard it. And oh, oh, nobody complains I, here. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody at all. I sent it out, uh, I'm sure, to preachers to pray with us about this thing. I'm going to condense the story just to say, through that cabin cruiser, we ended up over a three, four-year period with a uh, 07 Mercedes Benz um, and uh, a fifth wheel. Now... God, uh, I've, I've apologized to him so many times for that. Um, uh, it's a, the Mercedes is an 07 um, uh, three, uh, 320 uh, car size. It's a crossover. Um, and the cabin cruiser, um, when I was in Australia visiting our son the last time and visiting and preaching some over there, because we had no, had no means for transporting that thing. I said, pray with me that God will give us a, a trailer for that thing. And uh, I need it for a thousand dollars or less. I'm asking God for a five hundred dollar trailer. And I said, Chris, would you pray with me? Our son, Chris, would you pray with me about that? And he laughed a little bit and he said, yeah, Dad, but he said, you, you know you're not going to get a five hundred dollar trailer for that thing. Well, when, when we returned, uh, there was an old rusty looking trailer in, on Craigslist. And so uh, I made two trips over, looked at it, and so forth. Anyway, uh, I'm praying one morning about a trailer, and God said, I showed you one here a few days ago. And I said, Lord, that thing was rusty, and, and I don't, and I, you know, and he, so, so, so then I go back and look at it again, and it was ugly. Homemade trailer, homemade trailer. But I went over and looked at it, and I said, I think this thing, the guy said, come look at it. It's made, it's made strong, really strong. That thing was several thousand pounds. So anyway, I picked up the trailer, brought it home. It fit on there. I got some black paint, painted the rust. They tell me it's gone. I don't know, but it sold uh, anyway. And then it's so so now we've got a fifth wheel. The only problem is I've got a uh, suburban out there, and you can't pull fifth wheel with a suburban. <laughs> so so I'm thinking, well, I've got to get specific again. So I'm saying, Lord, I need a truck. And this time, though, I'm, very, I'm I'm really being specific. I said I want it with a Cummings engine, <laughs> and uh, and I need it pretty soon because we're we're going to use that some too in this ministry of yeah. going to where they are instead of them trying to come to us. Yeah. 
So anyway, that's in a nutshell. So we're praying for a truck with so an engine? So we're praying for a truck with a Cummings engine. engine. <laughs> I'd like an Allison transmission, but I'm not holding yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He might, he might think I'm a little picky. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As I've been told I am. But anyway, but I've learned specifics in prayer. And so that's, I'm asking God for that. And he said, he said we're good, I'm sure. Wow. Yeah. Just, just got to look. Well, I mean, he gave me a five... Nobody believes that God was going to give me a $500 trailer for when I rode the highway patrol had to inspect it, give a, give a tag for it. And he said, where in the world did you get this? <laughs> and it was still rusty and ugly at that time. And I said, well, uh, I told him where I picked it up out there. And he said, yeah, I've been sitting out there in the rust for, in the dirt for a long time. Yeah. And he said, yeah, because it was ugly. Oh my goodness. But I put lights on it and painted it black and put the boat on it. See, that's all you need. Yep. If you're feeling ugly this morning, you just need lights and a cup of paint. Yes. <laughs> right? That's all you need. You're good to go. But ask God for, tell, tell him what you need, the kind of trailer you need. So, you know, I have, I mean, I've learned that my needs are, my needs are big to yeah. me, but I serve a big God. And so yeah, I, I'm just uh, saying uh, every day, Lord, is today the day you're going to supply this? Yeah, so I'm still looking. See, I I, 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 don't know about you guys, but I look up here and I see a couple that has went through mountains and valleys, and and their faith is still solid. And I think at the end of the day, when we are at a place in our lives where we can sit back and we say, God, you took me to mountaintops, you took me through valleys, but at the end of the day, I still know the, the things that last: prayer, your word, and your promises. And, and, and so I really want you guys to, to to know this couple because this these are the people that you glean from. These are the people that are going to pour wisdom into your hearts. And, 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 and I want to ask you right now in your ministry, what's going on? What is God doing? And what do you what are you asking the Lord to do besides the, the engine? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to have body around that thing. Too. Right. Okay. <laughs> so Dodge, hey, yeah. hey, I have an engine Dodge, for you. Dodge, <laughs> Now, but um, um, one of the hardest things has been for me to scale down. Linda's health is starting to fail. When I saw these chairs up here, chairs, up, seats up here, I said, he knows we're getting old, so he's put seats <laughs> up here. <laughs> but Linda's health is, is failing, and uh, the doctor told her not long ago, as he had trained her back, he said, i got to tell you, you just got an old and worn out back. And that made her day. No, uh, she was real thrilled with it, but um, we had to we had to scale down, and, and uh, so we have what we started off with as a plan was our counseling part of our ministry, mm -hmm. a one bedroom apartment that we have couples into, and it was designed just for couples. Uh, we we could do a little more with small kids or something, but um, but um, so we're back to really where we started twenty. August this year, be 22 years ago, we started this, um, and um, and so now we're we're just asking the Lord to send us the ones who need us and need what we can share with them, and uh, and it's uh, the, but I start what I started to say was the hardest thing is when families phone me and say um, I, we need a break. We've been going at this for X number of years, whatever it is, and we really need a break. Uh, and, I, and I say to them, we can't accommodate families anymore. Um, yeah. And I always apologize, and sometimes I... Uh, we saw that moving into an apartment and letting them have a house. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's got stairs on it. <laughs> so, so that's not the best uh, for, for her anyway. But, you know, we're, we're just seeing what God's going to do. I, I don't know. Um, it, it may be that, um, you know, we'll use this fifth wheel um, much more than I imagined to go to uh, where hurting pastors are. Sometimes they won't come to us. Yeah. They won't. You know, in our area, folks, let me tell you this. Pastoring a church very well may be the hardest job in the world. And I say that uh, your preacher had no idea I was going to say that, but I say that from experience and the experience of others. You're in a war. This is a battle. This is a war we're in. You know, Satan is real, 
and the battle is real, and you got a volunteer army. Right. No, there's no draft. It's volunteer, and much of them, much of the time, in that army, have not been trained. They're not prepared for battle. They don't have the armor, and it's in the book. The armor's in there. You got to have the armor to be effective in the fighting. But but it is a hard and last not last year the year before last we had three young men in their 30s and 40s commit suicide pastors pastors um, that breaks my heart when I hear that but uh, you know you can't I mean like the guy on the seashore picking up throwing a <laughs> You know, you can't say, you can't help everyone, but you want to. Yeah. And so, um, just Lord use us and our experience that we can communicate to somebody else that will maybe help them in the battle. Yeah. I, I want to ask if you would uh, commit to praying for them. Um, I don't know about you, but if you've ever sat down with somebody and they're, they're pouring their heart out to you, uh, if you care about them and you love them, it does take stuff from you. Uh, and you, you suffer with them and you feel their pain. So this ministry, it's not an easy ministry. We think, oh, it's a retreat. But you know what? You're talking about trying to rescue as many people as you can. So it takes a lot of time and energy. So I want to pray for you guys. Because I, cause, um, going through issues and things in church and people and battles, uh, it does weigh heavy on pastors' hearts. And the very first thing that you think of is maybe I should quit, maybe I should walk away, yeah. maybe yeah. maybe I'm, I'm not effective and all that kind of stuff. And it, yeah. The enemy really puts all those lies in, yeah. in, in, his, head, in right. everybody's head. And, and so um, I just want to pray for you guys. And I want to thank you for taking the time to drive over here to come see us and to spend time at Renewal. Our pleasure. And uh, so if you would, let's do this. Let's, let's stand up. And then I'm going to ask, uh, and we're, we're, we're going to remain seated, so I'm just going to ask uh, as a church that, that you pray over <coughs> Harvey and Linda and their ministry, Anchor Ministry, and that, uh, and that you guys would get to know them before you leave or give them a hug, and don't squeeze Linda too, too much in the back, but, but uh, just love on them if you would. Father, we just we, we come before you, and we just thank you so much for this couple, and we thank you so much for what they mean to us, and and, uh, and part of what we do is a, is a direct result of their ministry and their commitment to, to you. And so, God, we don't have all the answers and we don't know why we go through valleys that we go through. But we know that after the valley, there is a mountaintop. And we know that, we, that our strength comes from you and your grace as you poured out upon us. So, Father, right now we pray. We ask that you would strengthen your people. We ask that you would uh, get the enemy out. And that your name and that your, your your holiness and your righteousness will be revealed. So, Father, we thank you so much for you and for for for, for, this, for the Goodmans and then for the anchor ministry that you would just bless them in just an incredible way. We pray for the uh, the truck that needs to pull that fifth wheel. We know that you have it already provided. So, God, we're asking in faith that you do that. So, we we we, we just are excited about what's what's in store. So, we love you. We love them. Thank you so much for letting them be with us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, sir. Love you. All right, you can see, you can sit down. Uh, have a seat, I should say. Um, we are we are excited. You know, Renewal Church is on a path that God has for us, and so and we're excited about see where 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 that is going. So we're gonna we have a quick business meeting that we want to get into and we want to share some things with you, uh, and so uh, before we do that, uh, again I want to pray. Again, we pray for the goodness. Now we're gonna pray for our, our church and pray, and we want to share some things with you. So are you guys okay with that? Yes. Hear what God is doing? Okay. So let's pray, and then as we pray, we'll have Don come on up. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for just who you are and, and what you're about. And uh, we just thank you so much for the way you just have blessed us. And so God, we ask that you would um, just really begin to give us wisdom and lead us and show us what you want us to do. We don't want to please anybody. We just want to please you. And God, we need your hand upon us. We need you to bless us. We need you to lead us and guide us. 
So we love you. We thank you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I was just thinking, as Don gets his, his stuff together, I want Judy, where's Judy now? Why don't you come up and give us some quick announcements, and then, uh, and then we'll just kind of get into all of the other stuff as well. Hey, I, I didn't mean you were like a busybody. Or <laughs> no, we just okay. said it. I want to publicly apologize to say to you. Now you know why I like the beach so much, because I like to play in the sandboxes. Yes, yes. Um, my name is Judy Henderson. If you haven't met me, I'm a direct result of the ministry of Harvey and Linda Goodman. And it all happened because a neighbor invited my dad my dad was buying manure for his vegetable garden from his neighbor, and my, our neighbor invited my dad to a, to a church meeting. It wasn't even really church. It was just a meeting. And so we want to invite you this Thursday. Um, we're going to go to the, the food truck rally, the roundup over here in Kitland Nelson Park. We're going to meet up there at 6 o'clock. So maybe you can invite a friend that um, maybe the threshold is a little bit high for church, and you can just bring him out there and... We'll, we'll meet them, and hopefully then once they do come to church, they'll know a familiar face or two. So we're going to meet there. Instead of um, the Henderson Connect group on Thursday night, we're all just going to go over to Kitline Nelson Park. So bring some money for food and a folding chair, and we're just going to hang out and have a good time. And, and we would love for everyone to show up. That would be great. And it also helps support our local community and the vendors as, um, as, you know, as we try to reach out for Apopka. So... Um, we also want to let you know that there's a new Connect Group Bible study starting. It's called Relatable. Um, the gospel is powerful enough to bring healing into all of our relationships. So if you are interested in that, it's the Owen Connect Group on Monday nights. Uh, Wednesday nights, the Redder Connect Group is doing Grace, which is a phenomenal study. Um, Tuesday nights is sermon-based. Thursday nights, we're moving the, ju for just this week. Um, but we also want to let you know that tonight is youth right here at 6 o'clock. We're doing taco night, so that should be a lot of fun. We do games, we hang out, we have a great time. And next Sunday night is Super Bowl, um, and we're going to be doing a Super Bowl party for the parents and the youth, and that will be at our home. And it will be featuring the challenge for halftime, which if you are a brave enough soul, uh, we'll be doing a polar bear plunge into the pool in February. So it's not heated. So um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see who the brave ones are. If it's warm by love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I think Tristan's going to do it. He's over here shaking his head. Yes. Mom says no. She does. Oh, well. Okay. We'll let y'all work that out. But um, we also want to invite you to be a part of what God is doing here at Renewal. And I know you have gifts and talents because some of you are amazing. I know you, some better than others, but I know that you also have talents that you're not sharing. And we want you to encourage, we want to encourage you to become a part of this dream that God has placed in our heart, um, where people are rescued, redeemed, and restored. So we want to invite you to be a part of the dream team is what we're going to be calling it, to where you can use your talents and your gifts. Um, maybe you're good at working with kids. Maybe you're great at cooking. Maybe you're an artist, maybe you're a graphic artist. Whatever it is that your talents are, I guarantee you we can put them to use. Um, we saw Curtis up there today playing the sax, so that was awesome. Yes. So keep branching out, being brave, getting up there, and I love seeing the youth up there as well. So we'll keep it short. I know that we have a business meeting to get to, but if you do have any questions, let us know. Make sure you grab a bulletin, and if you're new here and if you're here for the first time, we want to say welcome. Um, we're all kind of new here, and we're excited about this journey that God has for us. So with that being said, please.